welcome back. <clears throat> Try it up. Welcome back to another morning on the small holding. I'm just filling up the little ducklings pond there. They have to get fresh water a couple of times a day because they are filthy animals. And it's my first day off work, so off the paid job for the next week. So I'm so excited. Lots and lots to get, uh, lots and lots to get done. And of course, I'm going to show you as much of that as I can. Today, though, it's a bit of a chorsy day, so we've got things to do that. Um, just need doing basically so i'm going to get as many things as i can done and out of the way this morning and then we'll see what the afternoon brings but Stephen and i have got um, a couple of things that we need to get done with the kids as well so once all that's out the way then we'll be getting in the garden getting in the kitchen um, i'm also doing lots of other videos um, for different topics that i've been promising i've got a right old list going on so i'll be trying to get those videoed as well as a vlog and um, the aim is to share a little secret with you so we recently got to 1,000 subscribers. So if you remember that, I put a video out and thank you for everybody that supported us through that. But we're very near the views that you need as well. So you need like 4,000 watch hours in 12 months. We're so close to that. So the aim is for me by the end of these holidays, little goal that I've set myself to try and get over that mark as well. How exciting will that be? Well, it will be for me. You guys might think I'm crazy, but if you're here for that kind of ride, then enjoy. Right, I'm gonna show you, I've got a, uh, delivery of, do you remember I said that I've got the grafted aubergines? Um, so I only buy plant wise, I get grafted aubergines and uh, tomatillos, I couldn't remember then. So the aubergines have just arrived from Thompson and Morgan. So I'm going to get those opened and soaking because I haven't got time to do anything with them just yet. And uh, they might be a little bit dry in the packaging. So I'm going to get those opened, get them soaked a little bit, make myself look a little bit more normal, and then head out and get these outside jobs done, as in outside off the farm, not outside, outside. So they've come in a huge parcel, so I'll get these opened. It's a lot bigger than I anticipated. Maybe it's just all packaging, so we'll have a look. So what they've done is they've put a box that is as long as the, the stick. So I'm guessing some of these plants that they send might be a bit taller than this. Now these are the aubergine grafted Scorpio variety. First time I've tried these because where I used to get them from doesn't send them out anymore, doesn't do them. I think it just does um, business now and not, not domestic. They look healthy, look good. So I'm going to give them a drink. And while we go out and get our jobs done, you can feel in the leaves, they're a little bit dehydrated. While we're going to get our jobs done, these guys can have a nice little drink and we will catch up with them and get them potted on a little bit later. One of the aubergines has actually snapped. It was the one that was looking a little bit um, worse for wear than the others. Two are looking good. So they're soaking and fine. So I've just emailed Thompson and Morgan, um, the company where I got them from, and asked for a replacement. So we'll see how they do. Back home, and this is what we're working on. It doesn't look very interesting. It's got no veggies in it, but it's right at the front. So this is where we have the honesty box. And this area here just gets totally overgrown um, really quickly and it's starting to look really untidy and messy. So before Stephen gets home, I thought it'd be a nice surprise if me and the kids get this done. We've bought some bark, um, ground bark, whatever it's called, wood chip type stuff to put down, but I don't know how many bags it's gonna take. And there's some really big thistles there as well. So I'm gonna start working on that, get that finished. And hopefully when he comes home, it'll all look lovely and pretty. Well, that's it, we're done. So we've done the front garden and we've done the bit that I've just shown you. So we'll walk over and see that. Stephen is due home any minute. So hopefully it'll be a lovely surprise for him to see that it's looking nice and neat and tidy. I know I'm pleased with it. There's all the weeds coming up in the, in the driveway and things like that, but I'm not bothered. So this look is what it looks like now. Let me flip you around and show you. There you go. That's lovely, neat and tidy. We picked up this, um, this bark from the local garden centre. It's not cheap, but you know what? It's worth it because that looks so much better all the way along to there now and all of the driveway and everything like that's been at the entrance. I've taken the lawnmower over that, that was interesting. Yeah, good job done. Isn't it lambs? Well, I'm gonna have a well-earned cuppa now. As I say, Stephen will be home any second. So we shall have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea together and see what is planned for the afternoon. Well, Grace gets the lambs out for a bit.
well it's sunday already so we were so tired last night after we got all of that work done outside we also did the front garden and all the things so busy busy times and then we just chilled out last night enjoyed a little drink something to eat and now this morning it's uh, sunday and it's around lunchtime so we've had Already this morning we've had guests over, so while they've been over we were chatting in the kitchen and I've uh, refreshed the sourdough because I want to get a new sourdough on. I found a few recipes that I want to try and share with you um, that aren't just your basic sourdough loaf, the, like there's a rhubarb sourdough bun, things like that anyway. Um, so I got lots of kitchen jobs done whilst I was chatting away and while Stephen was chatting away to our guests this morning. But then we realised actually we need to go and get some animal feed, so Grace and I have come to the country store which I think you've seen before, where we get the animal feed from. And we're going to pick up some pig food and some grows for the meat birds and the ducklings and also some layers for the hens as well. Um, so let's see what the prices are compared to what they have been. And then when we get home, we're going to pick some lunch up on the way uh, back home just so that once we get home, we can just get busy because we've got a very busy day planned, lots of things going on. And after today, um, I'm planning on doing a full week vlog of what's, go what's going on next week because I'm actually off uh, work or off the day job the paid job and so I'm going to be vlogging what we're having for tea what we're doing on the small hold and all the different things and lots of other extra videos as well I'm starting my new Canon series so it's going to be a super busy week which I plan on taking you along for and showing you all of that too and finally I'm also going to get my Patreon podcast um, recorded today as well so it'll be interesting to see if I can work that technology out anyway I'm going to stop waffling let's go into the farm shop and get some feed outside it's been tipping it down but I'm in the greenhouse and the sun's actually coming out it's really bright now it wasn't a minute ago and I'm basically getting lots of the seedlings that we've got that are desperate to be potted on into bigger pots I'm getting on with that at the moment um, we'll see what the weather does I've got lots of outside work that I want to be getting on with as well but I think everything's going to be really wet now because it was a really heavy downpour but what we will do is have a little look around uh, how things are doing that have recently gone in the recent seeds and things like that and basically spend the afternoon out here getting on with lots of different tasks um don't have a plan because you know what happens when i make a plan but for now i'm going to spend a little bit of time getting on with this you can hear Stephen in the background he's got a job on with a fence so he's just turned some tools down on the back of the lawnmower um the ride on that's what it sounds like it does these are what i've just potted on the other day these are some uh red mustard um looking really well really healthy there i'm pleased with those but these here are what I'm working on just now. I've also just potted on some of the Anulpa F ones. I think those are the gherkins. So these have gone into the bigger pots. They'll probably be the last pots that they get put into. Look at this, I've just blooming noticed that. So this this was just like the other mustards, but something's had that away. Blooming neck. I'm gonna have to keep more of an eye on these. And then the last of the tomatoes that um, weren't doing as well are now doing as well. So I shall try and get those potted on. Well, it'll definitely be while I'm off. Um, I'm not sure I'll get time to do it today because that's going to involve trips to the muck heap to get more muck. But incidentally, what I'm actually doing is one of the kids has just brought me, this is the muck from the muck heap. So this is the well-rotted stuff. And I'm just mixing it with um, normal compost. So this, this is the mix. So there's compost and rotted muck in there because we're getting to the stage now where we can't just keep using compost. It's too expensive. Um, but yeah, th these are the the other bits and pieces that I potted on recently and just not thriving this year, the peppers and things. That's the free pepper that I got, you know, with the um, tomatillos, which actually are over here, look. These <laughs> have totally taken off. Tomatillos are such a forgiving plant. They're fantastic. 
Oh, there's a butterfly needs rescuing. I shall be back. Got caught up in a cobweb. It's recovering. Right, I'm gonna get on with this now. Whilst I'm busy working in here, Stephen is doing the fencing project I've just mentioned and he's just come up and said, can you come and have a look at something? Um, so basically we're putting the sheep on the riverbank, which we've showed you before in a different video many moons ago. But these guys, are the lambs are big enough and old enough now that we think that, um, and the mams are obviously protecting them. And there's a lot more grass on the riverbank, so we need to get them on there. But there are some trees that are also on there that need protecting first. So Stephen's just been and got the posts. So he was telling me that the timber has like doubled again in price. It's just ridiculous. So we're going to work with what we've got. He did get a few of the smaller posts um, and we're just going to figure out how and which trees need protecting. Um, some of them sadly didn't make it. I did lose a plum tree that we put in down there. Anyway, let's go and have a look. It's really cold down here and what Stephen's doing at the minute is just clearing around the trees because obviously that's suppressing their growth at the minute but when we put the sheep on there they'll just eat the trees in seconds. So what he's got is a few of these posts that I've just mentioned and he's going to try and place them around the trees with some stock fencing although that won't be high enough so we'll, we'll see what he comes up with um, just to stop the sheep from being able to get to the trees hopefully because what they do is they climb up the stock, fen up the stock fencing and then lean over and um, when we did it before they trashed them a little bit so we're gonna have to keep a close eye on it this time anyway so the plan is for the sheep to go on the river bank which is all the way down there and then try and get these trees up a bit uh, i think what we might do is once we've cleared it somewhat and when they come off we'll figure out how to put something around the base and, and mulch them so that, um, that the grass isn't always competing so we'll have a look see what he's doing so we've settled on, how tall are these posts? Six foot? No, just under six foot. So we could have got the eight foot posts, but they're ridiculously expensive. So we're going to have to place these um, posts a little bit further away so that the uh, sheep can't just lean over, like I mentioned. But Stephen just reminded me that it was actually um, when they had these electric fence posts that they leaned over and the fence clapped collapsed previously so hopefully that won't happen this time so he's going to hammer these in and then put the stock fencing around the little square that he's created we were thinking that we could have used the eight foot ones and just doubled the height of the stock fencing and then put them closer so that we didn't lose as much ground um, but obviously with the cost it was just ridiculous i mean the price of timber has gone through the roof as i say so we've gone for this option we've got lots of stock fencing spare so we're able to do that and just set them a little bit further away and to be honest it feels a bit safer for me because um, it gives a little bit more space around the tree for it to thrive i think what i might do is get a load of muck um the rotted muck that i showed you that i'm using in the greenhouse we've literally got tons of the stuff and to bring a couple of barrels down maybe and and suppress it that way it's difficult because i can't get in because of the fence so i'm not sure how we'll do that Anyway, I'm going to go back up the greenhouse and get on with my jobs now. And hopefully, in two or three or four years, we'll actually get something off these trees. There's two hazelnuts, a red one and a green. I got distracted on the way up. This little guy was floating around in the horse's water. He has just been moving, or she, he. Hope you're okay, little thing. I don't know whether the best thing is to leave him outside for the wind to dry. His wings are absolutely soaked. I'll put him in the greenhouse. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I wish this blooming weather would make its mind up. It's too hot and too cold. It's been raining and it's absolutely boiling now. 
Anyway, Stephen's still busy down the river banks getting that sorted out. Um, I've potted on quite a few things, which I'll show you just now. And I can't remember if I said or not, but he has made some improvements to the cold frame. So these got whipped away in one of the latest storms that we had. Um, so he's made some improvements to one and hopefully we'll get round to doing the second one. I might remind him about that and see if he gets round to that today. Uh, I've got a load of stuff to go in it, which is where I'm, which is really why I want it fixed in so that uh, we can benefit from having the cold frame because everything that I've got has been in the greenhouse up to now. Now, unfortunately, some of the brassicas that we planted just the other day haven't survived for whatever reason. So they did have pellets and things around them, the organic pet-free pellets, which I know not everybody agrees with, but um, we suffer so badly here. But they've just not worked. Um, they've just died off a couple of them. So I do have some spare brassicas to go in. So I need to get that. So I'm not going to try and do that today, though. I'll get that done as one, as one of the jobs this week. But I'll show you what's going on in this cold frame that I'm stood next to now. And I'll, and I'll quickly show you what I've potted on as well. So these are all the squash that we potted on. There's a couple of courgettes and there's a couple of different types of squash. There's the crown prince. Um, oh, these are cucumbers actually. So what I will do, once these cold frames are empty of everything else, I'll use them to grow things in as in for the full life. So the cucumbers could sprawl in here or whatever. So these, these frames might end up being open in the summer comp all the time. But this is the upgrade that he's made. So he's made like a wooden frame along the top and the edge um, and to support obviously the plastic so it doesn't get snapped or become too degraded but you can see these bits here are just held in with some funky old drawing pins now back here we've got the um coal rabbine they're the oriental cabbages and there's some turnips there as well now this is the spinach which i don't know what i'm playing at but this has gone to seed now I just sowed these far too late, so I need to remember to sow them earlier on in the year. But I do have a variety um, in the ground that's supposed to be okay for the summer. So we'll see, because they don't, they don't like the, the heat, do they? Uh, parsnips and it must be a, a rogue carrot. And these potatoes are coming on fantastically, more parsnips. Now, these are the strawberries that I rescued in the broken cold frame. So I didn't rescue them from the cold frame. It just so happens it's broken and these are the ones that I rescued. So they're actually, some of them have taken really well. You can see there's baby strawberries growing. Some of them not as well, but all I'll do is where we've got dead leaves, I'll just chop them off. And then this is the cold frame that I'd like Stephen to try and fix up for me because what I'm gonna do is now these strawberries are doing better, I'll get them taken out of here. And actually that, that's the other spinach over there hiding that um, for the summer, hopefully. And if Stephen can get this repaired, then all of the things that I've potted on can go in there until they're ready to go in the ground just to harden off a little bit. So some of them won't need it, but you never know. So we've got some Siberian kale. I've just started moving these through when I thought I'd show you what's going on. We've got some red mustards. We've got black Tuscan kale. You, Miss Chicken, are not gonna be eating anything here. This um, also a Portuguese kale. Now these are the sweet corn, took a little bit of a battering in the rain that we've just had. Leeks that are going at the bottom. Uh, mustard, red mustard tatsoi. Uh, tender stem beans, different type coloured beans here as well. And that's the Portuguese kale, so that must be the... Oh no, this is, what is this? Hang on, we can see together. Oh, this is the coal rabbi. So we've got lots of different types of things going on here. And I'll get some of these in the cold frame. Uh, just until I get room in the ground actually for them as well. If I leave them out, the pigeons will get them. So, I shall carry on, might have to have a sit down and see where we get to. I've also rescued a couple of lettuce as well that I'm going to get potted up. Uh, we'll see how we get on for those. There's some more of the coal rabbi here. I want to put um, labels in each pot. I don't like using too many plastic labels, but I just get lost otherwise, so I'm going to have to. Um, so these are the different types of coal rabbi that I showed you before as well. And tomorrow on Monday, hopefully I'll show you on the vlog, um, all of these squash I'll start getting put in. So I've got a plan for those in the ugly area, as I call it. Um, but that's going to be a heck of a lot of work. So in the meantime, this is my little station, working, busy, busy working on. I've um, got my bucket of, bucket of muck and I'm just going to keep on going until I run out of muck or compost or energy, really.
I have to be honest though, it got too hot in here again and I started feeling a little bit queasy. So that's why I've come outside. The polytunnel's gonna need watering and the onions that I put in there are just not doing very well at all. So I may have to bite the bullet this week and, and get those took out and put something else in. So I'll, I'll see and I'll, I'll share that with you on one of the vlogs. So I'm gonna get that watered. It's not quite as hot in the polytunnel as it is in the greenhouse. I'm going to get that watered now and then see how everybody else is doing. Um, but I'm going to move all of these plants that are outside, uh, that aren't in the, the veg garden as we call it, because the chickens can get to here. They're not supposed to, but they escape sometimes and they can get to here. And I don't want to put all this hard work in to then lose it to pesky chickens like we did to the lambs last year. <laughs> so I'll get these moved through um, and check with Stephen about that cold frame, actually. Well, that's a good job done. So this field behind us here is full of docks just on this side. So what Stephen came up with the bright idea of moving the meat birds into the field with the horses so that they can fertilise it, but also they'll, they'll clear it of docks as we move them around like twice a day at the minute. I mean, the, the, some of them are, are big enough now, really, to be honest. But yeah, so these guys are going to help us keep the docks down. But also just behind the horse, there, you can see the sheep are on the riverbank now. Couldn't get any footage because it's all hands on deck when we do that. So we've got the two orphan lambs still in the garden and what Stephen and I need to do now is just make sure that the sheep have got water because obviously their water's still up here so we're going to take that down to them and then hopefully those meat birds should be fine. Everyone's tired, good job done. Well it's a lot lighter on the camera than it actually is and look what these guys have done already. They've stripped it clean. So doing a good job. We're just going to check on everything before we go to bed for the night. First round. It's one way to keep the weeds down. Stephen's just going to get them some water and I'm just going to walk down and check on the lambs. That white dot there is an escaping. What we've actually done is um, because we learned last year that the lambs obviously come through this this bottom bit, we put the wire across. It's not barbed wire, it's just plain wire all the way across. But some are obviously <laughs> determined. These guys look okay. Yeah, they've walked it down. She's back through. So that's it. All done and dusted for the night. Well, that's it. First day off for me. Poor Stephen's back to work tomorrow. So thanks for watching. We'll be back bright and early in the morning. Take care. Bye for now.